Coming up today, President Park and Hay orders the use of emergency measures to stabilize markets if needed following Britain's decision to leave the EU. Korea markets opened lower on Monday but have since steadied. There's turmoil in Britain following the country's Brexit vote. The ruling Conservative Party is looking for a new Prime Minister. The opposition Labour Party is in full revolt against its leader. First, it's back and bigger than ever. The expanded Panama Canal formally opens following a multi-billion dollar project that took nine years to complete. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Monday, the 27th of June. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Adidang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this afternoon. The decision by British voters to part ways with the European Union is causing political chaos in the UK. The ruling Conservative Party is looking for a replacement for outgoing Prime Minister David Cameron. The main opposition Labour Party is in full revolt against its leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, Kim Il Gunn starts us off. Britain has a serious case of the post-Brexit blues and its government has been left rudderless and unstable. The two favorites to become the next leader of the Conservative Party and therefore Prime Minister, the Leave campaigner Boris Johnson and the Home Secretary Theresa May are said to be preparing their campaigns. Prime Minister David Cameron said last week that he would resign by October. The main opposition Labour Party has been hit with a series of resignations by the shadow cabinet, and its leader Jeremy Corbyn is coming under intense pressure to step down. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry stressed that Britain's exit from the EU must be done as smoothly as possible in order to minimize economic disruption. Speaking in Rome on Sunday, he said the United States respected the UK's democratic decision. He also pledged that the special relationship between the two countries would endure. One country has made a decision. Obviously, it is a decision that the United States uh, had hoped would go the other way. But it didn't. We will continue, the United States, to have a very close and special relationship with Great Britain. We value that relationship. That does not change because of this vote. Asian countries, including South Korea, China and Japan, have also expressed concerns about economic stability following the Brexit vote. With the dust yet to settle, Spain conducted its nationwide parliamentary election on Sunday, just three days after the UK's referendum. The results are being released, but with almost all votes counted, the Conservative People's Party has won the most seats, but fallen short of garnering a majority. It's expected to get up to 163 seats, followed by the socialist PSOE with 86 seats. This contradicted an earlier exit poll suggesting the PSOE had slipped into third place behind anti-austerity coalition Unidos Podemos. The election came as Spain's main parties failed to produce a government last December. Kim Mogyan, Arirang News. Now, markets here in Korea are still relatively jittery following the Brexit news. Korean shares opened lower but recovered some of their earlier losses with the benchmark Kospi trading at the 1910 level as of 11.30 a.m. Uh, local time. That is down around half a percent from last Friday's close. The index actually opened 1.2 percent lower. The tech-heavy Kosdaq had also dropped around 2.8 percent from the previous session's close. Uh, but it was only down 0.3 percent 30 minutes ago. The trend indicates investors are continuing to look for safer assets like gold and the Japanese yen in the face of the uncertainty resulting from the UK referendum. The foreign exchange market is also showing uh, some volatility as well. The Korean won is currently trading at uh, 1,184 against the greenback weakening from 1,179 uh, compared to last Friday's close. Now, offering her first public and verbal comments on the Brexit vote, President Park and Hay ordered her top aides to do all they can to stabilise the market given the gravity of the situation. At a regular meeting with her senior secretaries on Monday, President Park called for round-the-clock monitoring of the markets and a complete crisis management system at the governmental level. 
She added that the Korean economy has the financial stability and resilience to absorb the impact of Britain leaving the EU. She stressed that Seoul must join efforts to stabilize global financial markets through cooperation with the international community. On, it, on, on uh, uh, other issues, the president said reform and restructuring efforts must continue and the nation must unite to counter economic and security challenges, citing North Korea's ballistic missile tests last week. And following the unexpected Brexit outcome, the head of Korea's Financial Services Commission has warned volatility will continue to expand for some time until markets rebalance as a number of variables are still at play. That said, Im Jong-yong stressed that the volatility is highly unlikely to develop into a full-blown global financial crisis like the one seen in 2008. Im made the comments Monday during a Brexit focus meeting with other local financial authorities. The Commission Chair also said the government will keep a close eye on capital flows and take active and quick countermeasures if market uncertainty exceeds certain levels. Now, Korea's Prime Minister is in China for a five-day visit. Hwang gye starts his trip today in Tianjin for the opening ceremony of the summer Davos meeting, which will be attended by Chinese Premier Li Keqiang and 1,700 high-profile figures from 90 nine countries, including industrial leaders, scholars and journalists. This afternoon, the Prime Minister will speak about the cultural and technological implementation of the fourth industrial revolution in Korean policy. This evening, he is scheduled to fly to Beijing for a meeting with President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Keqiang on North Korea's recent missile launches. The leaders of China and Russia have expressed their strong opposition to North Korea's nuclear and missile programs and called for the strict implementation of UN sanctions on the regime. According to China's foreign ministry on Monday, this was part of the two leaders' joint statement signed at their bilateral summit in Beijing on Saturday, in which they warned North Korea they cannot accept its nuclear and missile strategy and they will continue to seek the denuclearization of the regime. Just as strong as those words, however, Beijing and Moscow also deeply oppose the possible deployment of a U.S. missile defense system to South Korea. The statement said the third system would negatively affect the global and regional strategic balance, stability and security. Now, in the United States, the latest poll shows the presumptive Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton has taken a double-digit lead over her Republican rival Donald Trump for the first time since last fall. Lee Min Young reports. Bad news for the Trump campaign. The latest survey shows that support for the Republican candidate is plunging. In a head-to-head -head general election matchup, Clinton regained a lead over Trump among registered voters nationwide, according to the latest ABC News Washington Post poll. The poll shows 51 percent of American voters favor Clinton, with Trump on 39 percent. That gives Clinton a 12 percentage point advantage over her rival. This is Clinton's largest lead in post-ABC polling since last fall, and a dramatic reversal from last month's survey, where Donald Trump led Hillary Clinton 46 percent to 44 percent. June's poll comes after another round of self-inflicted controversies for Trump. His recent verbal attack on a judge of Mexican descent was considered racist by many Americans. Also, he has been facing widespread criticism for his stance regarding the Orlando mass shooting and terrorism, as he reiterated that U.S. should put a temporary ban on Muslim migration into the country. The poll showed only 28 percent of voters felt Trump did better than Clinton in responding to the carnage in Orlando. The Washington Post pointed out that Trump's political standing is on dangerous ground. 56 percent of respondents said Trump stands against their beliefs, and nearly two-thirds answer that he is not a qualified presidential candidate. Lee Min Young, Arirang News. Now, it was supposed to be ready in 2014, but nine years after work started, the new expanded Panama Canal has finally opened for business. The renovation of the 102-year-old canal will allow larger ships to travel between the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. Korea is also expected to benefit, as our Hwang Ho Jun reports. To some, it's one of the seven wonders of the modern world. The revamped Panama Canal reopened on Sunday, 
following its first renovation since it was first constructed in 1914. The Panama Canal 102 years ago connected two oceans. Today it connects the present and the future. The completion of the 5.2 billion U.S. dollar project that started in 2007 was marked by a Chinese ship carrying about 9,000 containers foraging through. Thanks to the expansion, the canal's capacity has doubled, allowing a new generation of container ships that are about 130 percent larger in size to pass through. Capacity-wise, the new set of locks will also allow ships that carry up to 14,000 containers an increase from 4,400 containers. Korea will also benefit from the updated canal. Travel time for large shipping vessels from New York to Busan took about 45 days when using the Suez Canal. But as the new Panama Canal allows larger ships to pass through, the traveling time is expected to decrease to 35 days, potentially giving a much-needed boost to Korea's struggling shipping industry. Hwang Ojun, Arirang News. Iraqi forces have recaptured the city of Fallujah from Islamic State militants after a month-long operation. Fallujah, a major city in Ambar province, was the first Iraqi city to be captured by ISIS fighters in early 2014. More than 1,800 militants were killed in the operation to take back the city. Iraq's prime minister declared it a joyful victory and said they would soon retake the ISIS-held city of Mosul as well. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon welcomed the victory and stressed that the UN will support Iraq and its people in all aspects. However, he did urge Baghdad to investigate reports that some forces linked with the Iraqi government had committed rights abuses against displaced civilians. South Korea and Israel have kicked off their first round of free trade agreement negotiations in Seoul. Korea's trade ministry said the two countries will discuss issues like goods, services, investment and technological cooperation. Israel is Korea's 49th largest trading partner. Seoul mainly exports automobiles and wireless communication devices to Israel and imports semiconductor equipment and electronic parts. Trade volume between Korea and Israel was 2 million US dollars last Last year, but the amount has been on a downward trend since 2012. Officials say a free trade deal would boost bilateral economic exchanges. 26 Korean owners of gasoline-powered vehicles made by Volkswagen are suing the German automaker and its local unit for emissions manipulation. Baron Law, which represents the plaintiffs, has filed a class-action lawsuit against Volkswagen, Audi, Volkswagen, Korea and Korean car dealers. The action comes after prosecutors in Seoul found that the cars, the seventh generation Golf 1.4 litre TSI, were equipped with software to cheat emissions tests in November 2014. Regarding the exact amount of compensation, Baron Law said it will wait until the US District Court in San Francisco decides on the compensation amount for American customers. The results in San Francisco are expected on Tuesday. Now, Korea is joining the global push to implement clean air policies to curb air pollution following the green policies set in cities around the world. Shin Se-min has the details. Cities around the world are implementing a range of measures to reduce auto emissions. The London mayor has called air pollution the world's biggest environmental challenge and is pushing to implement an ultra-low emissions zone that would require drivers of the oldest and dirtiest vehicles to pay a fine. A standard for heavy vehicles will be fully implemented London-wide starting in 2020. In France, under a new law aimed at curbing smog, cars registered before 1997 will be barred from entering Paris starting July 1st. Over in India, reports that pollution levels in Delhi aligned with those of Beijing prompted the Indian city to ban all new large diesel cars and SUVs with engines of more than 2,000 cc's and to phase out diesel taxi cabs. Korea is joining the clean air revolution, though it's been slower to make changes. It currently ranks 173rd out of 180 countries in terms of air quality, but the government is hoping to change that. The government once encouraged diesel car ownership by giving diesel car owners a tax break starting in 2009, 
The policy worked, though maybe too well. And Korea's Automobile Manufacturers Association says last year, nearly 45 percent of all registered vehicles ran on diesel, or four times the number in 2008. But the government is now taking a different approach. It plans to strengthen restrictions on aging diesel cars while promoting electric vehicles, with the goal of having them represent 30 percent of all auto sales by 2020. Experts say such efforts are a must. Also, there is a, you know, necessary for the government and other civil society organizations to tell the general public that actually diesel vehicle is very harmful for some ex in some aspect, right? That's where we need to place the uh, you know, effective regulatory measures uh, by the government. Experts are optimistic that cities in Korea will be able to go all electric by 2030 by following the example set by Jeju Island. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Well, those are the stories we've been following on this Monday afternoon here in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website adirang.com forward slash news. We also have a smartphone application. You can find it by searching for Adirang TV in your app store. Have a wonderful day and a great start to the week. Goodbye.